Welcome and good morning to your daily dose of the social show. Uh, we give you the very latest in all things CSI, CSR and CSP. And if it's not so obvious, I'm talking about corporate social investment, corporate social responsibility, as well as shared value. I have an amazing guest on the show today. Uh, and we're talking about something that's really, really close to my heart. Good news, actually. Uh, on a subject that I've been trying to get um, the pulse on for a while. But before we get into that, we're going to go straight into the headlines. SABC radio stations have lined up numerous activities in celebration of Heritage Month, which celebrates the nation's diversity um, and calls on South Africans to unite despite their cultural differences. Five FM's Nick Hammond of Hammond Time, Mondays, Fridays to nine, from nine to twelve o'clock, actually, will take a listen on a true South African journey as he visits all nine provinces, which start on the first uh, of September, so it's already started. And the show will take its listeners on a month-long excursion as Hammond and producer Mad Money Mike travel to the nine provinces spending at least two days in each as they learn more about the vibrant heritage in the cities and small towns. In other news, Hotlines has launched a campaign on crowdfunding platform, Thunder.com, to bring life to What's Your Story, a project inspired by the film Beyond the River. Hotlines has produced over 11 feature films, one part uh, TV series and scores of short videos which have been instrumental in starting conversations around important issues that play out in our society. It has turned to crowdfunding to bring South African people together to preserve the stories that need to be told and give one million individuals a platform to be heard by raising one million rand. And lastly, the Advertising Standards Authority is seeking applications for a permanent CEO and is offering BEE scorecard points against the new responsible social marketing element in exchange for financial support. The ongoing business rescue plan adopted by creditors on the 25th of April 2017 hopes to return the ASA to solvency and limit overheads and reduce litigation risks and uh, implement a sustainable funding model. To this end, a new board was elected in May 2017 with Gail Schke taking up the position of interim CEO soon thereafter. And that concludes our news for today. Brandlive.co.za Have you ever thought about the power of social media? Social media has the power to make your business grow. Grow! Yeah. Why don't you let us manage your social media? Because our business is to see your business grow. Visit us at www.beastownmedia.co.za the headlines I spoke to you a little bit about the guest that I have in studio who is going to be sharing uh, some really significant light on the situation at hand I'm um, talking about Kwara Kekana who's the spokesperson of BDS South Africa and the reason why we have on the show is because uh, the social show is really itching to find out about the recent boycott that has left the Israel uh, Africa summit called off and Kekana is going to elaborate a little bit on this matter. Good morning and thank you for being here. Good morning thank you so much for having us on the show. It's so great to have you so tell us a little bit more about the summit. What is it actually about and what is it that we hoped to represent? I mean, from our understanding, and if you also, I mean, perhaps also analyze what kind of tactics Israel is employing um, in terms of trying to find new friends. Yes. The one thing is that because of the global BDS movement that started in 2005, and it's a Palestinian-led movement that calls on for the isolation of Israel because of its apartheid policies, yes. using tactics of boycotts, disinvestment and sanctions, boycott campaigns referring to sports boycotts, cultural boycotts, um, you know, Amzimbang, for example, and sort of this might ring a bell to our listeners, you know, when you look at the anti apartheid movement, for example, when similar campaigns and tactics were employed yes. to isolate South Africa because of its apartheid policies at the time. Yes. Of course, divestments, and I think quite pertinent to the show and to your listenership in terms of it refers to the role that multinational corporations and businesses play mm -hmm. in the violation of human rights. Yes. But in this particular case, in the violation of Palestinian human rights as well, of course, sanctions then talk about the role that governments play in, in expressing disapproval for what other governments are doing, yes. where human rights are concerned. In this case, refers to what Israel is doing. Yes. And of course, there are various forms of government sanctions and the calling off of this particular summit 
one could understand it within that context that yes. it is a form of government sanctions, but of course at a continental level. And I mean, when you start off, you said it's fantastic news. Absolutely, it's wonderful news yes. that the summit has been called off. Now, Israel, because of the BDS movement, is losing friends in various yeah. regions, in Latin America, in the European continent. Ironically as well, you know, in the US, on the ground, even though people are, you know, people are saying that what Israel is doing, especially young Jewish comrades on the ground, you know, in campuses, are saying what Israel is doing must not do it in our name as Jewish people. Yes. So you have progressive organizations in the U.S. and I'm particularly, you know, focusing a bit on the U.S. because they get so much support, Israel, from the U.S. and the White House, Obama's administration in the past, but of course also Trump's administration today, you know, the kind of military support that it gets, you know, in terms mm. of the arms, mm. uh, aid, you mm. name it, right? So Israel is then losing friends. It, it's then looking for new avenues and new areas to kind of sort of, you know, build new friendships. Yes. And they're looking to us, the African continent, to, to, to merge and, you know, form those new friendships. And that is the basis of the summit itself. But of course, there's been some resistance from, you know, some African states and progressives on the African continent, the broader Palestine solidarity movement on the continent, but also globally as well, calling on African leaders not to participate in the oh, summit that was called offshore. Definitely. And I, I actually want to know, um, I know you, you did uh, in, in the you know, the, the homework that we did, um, there's quite a, uh, I think it's a very interesting relationship between how Africa is seen by Israel. And I think you did touch on it a little bit. Can you touch on that a little bit more? Um, what are the views that, you know, a lot of um, Israel elite uh, politicians have had on, you know, Africa um, and, and why why do you think it would have you know, sort of infiltrated or influenced um, the boycott? Sure. I think the first thing is, you know, what is Israel's attitude to Africans yes. uh, broadly? Africa, I mean, Israel is an arrogant state. Um, it's a state that is a regime that practices settler colonialism, apartheid and occupation. Yes. And what it does is also sort of, you know, exports this kind of ideology wherever, you know, to everywhere else in the world, you know. And I'll come to in terms of, you know, sort of the, the kind of response from the African continent, but also broadly how it treats Africans in particular. Yes. You've got plus minus over 100,000 uh, African refugees living in Israel, okay. right? From Ethiopia, for example. Yeah. And the kind of things that females in particular have been subjected to female African refugees living in Israel. For example, and this is, you know, admitted by Israel, they've, they've, they've taken responsibility for this, ironically. I mean, uh, so, so what they've done is they've forcibly injected female refugees with birth control without wow. their knowledge. This is what they've done. And, they, and they've, uh, you know, they've, they've conceded that this is what they've done. Mm -hmm. uh, and they go on to call African refugees a cancer within the Israeli society. Mm. Israel is not a friend of Africa yes. at all. You know, if this is just the basis at which, you know, we really, you know, test what kind of a regime yeah. Israel is, is not a friend to the African people, is not a friend to the you know, South African continent, is not a friend to the females of, yes. of, of Africa and the, the African and the African women. And it's quite fundamentally a problem. It's an yes. arrogant state um, and it's a state that practices apartheid. Yes, and it kind of makes no sense for them to pray friendly now all of a Sunday. Um, can you talk, about, talk to us a little bit about the global BDS movement? Um, I know you spoke about it a little bit in the beginning, but how long has it been going? How has it became, you know, remained healthy so far? So in 2005, Palestinians in Palestine called on for a campaign, like I said, you know, earlier on to boycott, divest and yes. impose sanctions yes. against Israel until it complies with international law. Uh, BDS really is inspired by the anti-apartheid movement, as you'd remember, that started in the late 50s, yes. calling on the international community for help. You know, yes. the, the national liberation movements at the time said, you know what, we can't do this by ourselves. We need help from the international community. And the best way we think that they can contribute to the to the anti-apartheid movement and the struggle for a free people in South Africa mm. is to isolate South Africa because of its apartheid policies using, using different tactics. Mm. And because of the success and the victory of the anti-apartheid movement mm. and the isolation campaigns, the people of Palestine said, you know, we've seen what an isolation campaign did for the South African people mm. and we think that it can work for us today, you know. Mm. Uh, in 2005, they called, and this is like an overwhelming majority, you know. Mm. Uh, this includes almost all political parties in Palestine, you know, that have also adopt, adopted and endorsed the BDS movement yes. and think that is a strategy. Uh, and we're not saying it's a silver bullet, but it's one ways in which, which we can, can. Ho hold Israel accountable to yeah. international law, you know. And there have been major and significant victories since the BDS call was issued 12 years ago. Yes. Um, and significantly, I mean, some of them have come from, you think, the, the, the churches, for example. The Presbyterian Church, you know, votes to divest from Israel. 
the United Church of Christ, and these are some of the mainline churches in the U.S. Again, you know, going against the narrative of what the administration itself is doing. But people on the ground are saying, "But this is not. This doesn't look right." You yes. know, and in in South Africa as well, you know, in 2011, we seen the University of Johannesburg terminating its relations with an Israeli academic institution. Mm. In 2015, we have five SRCs, you know, in this country adopting full academic and cultural because of Israel. You know, some mm. of the major institutions in this country, you know, and some of the major st- the stakeholders, the major stakeholders in the in those universities saying as students we're saying that apartheid must not thrive in our universities you know and i mean there have been other victories for example in 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 the european continent you know the major pension funds in the world the norwegian punch the the, the, the norwegian swedish i mean pension fund the swedish pension fund the dutch pension fund as well you know all divesting um from israel and israeli linked banks as well and these are some of the major 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 pension funds uh in the world as well but i think it's quite important that we also talk about and that's what i was highlighting the issue of um you know the role of the of the, the christian community and the churches divesting from israel it's so important because a lot of times you know the, the narrative that's painted is that this is really an issue between jewish it's a religion uh, best, thing a religion or, thing yes. fundamentally it is not it's yes. fundamentally a human rights issue yeah. and people think oh my god it's an issue between muslims and we jewish people we yeah. can't get involved that's absolutely true. not yeah. it's a human rights issue fundamentally yeah. and we also need to talk about how Palestinian Christians themselves are suffering under the Israeli occupation, you know. Yes. Uh, and, you know, 2017 marks 50 years into the Israeli occupation of Palestine. So we need to openly and robustly talk about these yes. things. But also on Sundays, you know, uh, pastors need to use the pulpit, you know, yes. to talk about the role of the church, you know, yes. in social justice issues. Yes. Um, I mean... I completely agree He's, with you. Historically, mm. the church as an institution has mm. been a space, you know, that, that advances social justice yes. issues but as well. Has been activist organizations. If you look at the history of the anti-apartheid movement in this country, but also internationally as well, and the role the church, church has play. played. Sure, people like Rever- Reverend um, Trevor Haddleston, you know, you mm. can't separate that from the anti-apartheid movement. Yes. Of course, Archbishop Desmond Tutu, Definitely. which were some of the leading religious figures that were part of the anti-apartheid mm. movement as well. So it's quite so important that we have the churches as well, you know, participate in absolutely Absolutely, absolutely. I completely agree. And lastly, I just want to know, do you think we safely have a, a, a solid stance as South Africans on, uh, you know, the situation between Palestine and Israel? Because I know, you know, recently we had the hunger strike and a few politicians played around, played with that and, and actually went into, um, you know, a 24-day hunger strike. I just want to know, do you think as South African authorities, South African politicians, have they played their best cards? I think we can still do more. There is a need for, I think, the South African government to do more. But I think there is a need to intensify the isolation campaign, the boycott, divestment and sanctions campaign. But no doubt, you know, there's been significant successes or, you know, some of the victories that have been attained by, by government, but also the ruling party as well. Mm. In its, uh, its last national policy conference, there was a recommendation by the NPC that talked about the downgrading of the South African embassy in Tel Aviv. Yeah. As an expression of our disapproval of what, what Israel as a regime is doing to the Palestinian mm. people and advancing the Palestinian cause as well. Just last month, there was a visiting Israel Israeli delegation, uh, parliamentary delegation, and the South African Parliament said, "You know what? Wait a minute. We're not we gonna. We're not, we can't. We can't give an audience. We can't give an audience." So those are some of the important ways in that which means. we need to assert ourselves. Yes. Uh, but also because our 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 we have a shared uh, history and our shared experiences. You know, when you look at the and you draw the parallels between apartheid South Africa and apartheid Israel, you know, the similarities are so glaring, and mm. it's so important for the South African. South African people and the South African government, you know, continuously to assert itself, uh, you know, on the right side of history and saying, but wait a minute, we're not going to do this. But increasingly, as well, within the creatives industry as well, you know, we're seeing a lot of people that are coming out and saying, you know, as those in the creatives industry, we're not going to support anything that's related to Israel. To yeah. Israel, You know, we're writing, we're not participating in any festivals. And, you know, we're getting quite a lot of support yeah. from the mus- uh, the comedians in this country. People like Gerasol Dekha, yeah. Nina Hasty, Mashabed have all participated in the, the annual international Israeli apartheid week, you know, yes. uh, you know, comedy show i think it's the third one running this year you know called apartheid ain't funny oh, that's you know lovely. yeah so using that you know the, the the talents and saying the constituents that they bring along and say but you know what something is happening in palestine israel and we need to take a stance as, as those in the creatives industry and it's so important as south africans to also assert ourselves in that fashion lastly what do you think is the most important thing that um, south africans need to know about this um you know i think i think a lot of the time you don't find um young people speaking about it in, in general conversations, not necessarily as um, people don't have enough awareness around it. Um, just general people, individuals walking down the street. How do we then change that narrative and make sure that, you know, the, the, the ordinary South Africans understand that what we went through is happening, you know, across the seas and, and we need to start having those conversations so we can partake in, in whatever we need to. Sure. Maybe as a parting shot or two parting shots, the one thing, and I think we raised earlier, is that 
fundamentally, this is a human rights issue. Mm -hmm. And when we say Israel is an apartheid state, we're making a legal case as to why, you know, that is the situation. Uh, it's not a religious issue. Um, it's fundamentally a human rights issue. And, you know, there is a legal case to be made as to why Israel is an apartheid state. And we find that definition in the UN Convention on the Suppression and Punishment of the Crimes of Apartheid. That's the one. But what is also important is that when we talk about um, Israel today, we're talking about a regime, a state that was only established in 1948. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about the biblical land of Israel, you mm -hmm. know. And that distinction is always important to draw. Yes. And the way in which religion over time, you know, even in different conflicts around the world, you know, and wars around the world, religion has been used as a tool to oppress and to discriminate. Mm. In the South African case, you know, um, the you know those who believed in you know the superiority of Afrikaner, Afrikaner Dom said, you know, but wait, you know, we as Afrikaners were given by God as the superior race, you know, mm. and using the uh, Bible to justify that, mm. and that is not the case. Fundamentally, mm. it is a human rights issue, and yes. those are my parting shots. Lovely. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for having us on the show. Lovely. That was Kwena uh, Kwara Kakana, who's a spokesperson of BD on the social show if you want to know a little bit more about what she does it will be on our site on uh, Twitter on our Instagram as well as our Facebook so you will not miss out on this conversation also the podcast will be on www.social-tv.co.za and that concludes the social show thank you so much for listening we'll be back again tomorrow same time same place 9.30 to 10 uh, only on brandlive.co.za brandlive.co.za Harnessing the power of talk radio. Brandlive.co.za Yes, yes, guess who got brands talking? Brandlive.co.za